Well, hello again, folks. This is Wade Rush with Rush Lane Poultry and Game Birds here in Central South Carolina. Had a uh, call from a really nice gentleman just outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's, uh, he's got some emus, and he's wanting to start hatching some emu eggs. But with those big eggs like that uh, and a 60-day incubation cycle, they have some special needs. And so this is, uh, is going to be my first emu. Uh, which would be emu slash ostrich slash castle wary. Uh, very big birds. Uh, well, maybe not so much the castle wary because they live in the, uh, the jungles of South America. This is going to be more geared towards the birds from an arid environment like Australia, which is the uh, emu and, uh, and the ostrich from the arid plains in, uh, in Africa. So we're going to build a special incubator uh, for those eggs into a 48 quart cooler. So, uh, I'm gonna get some stuff together and we're gonna get after it. Be right back. Okay guys, for our emu incubator checklist, today we're building it into a 48 quart igloo. This is the Igloo Island Breeze cooler. I like them because they've got a textured flat top. It's easy to glue stuff to it and easy to fasten stuff to it. Easier to cut because you don't have all those ribs in the top of it. So, uh, cooler. We're using the GQF wafer thermostat. There's a particular reason why we want to do that, and I'll explain later. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot more sensitive, and we need a little more versatility with 60 days of incubation period. Um, you're going to need miscellaneous drill bits. Today I got, it'll be a quarter inch, 7 16 inch for all the holes that we're going to drill. You're going to need two ceramic light bulb fixtures you get them in uh at lowe's or um home depot ace hardware they're a buck or two um a piece or sometimes depend i've, I've seen them as high as five dollars a piece depending on where you get them but down here in the south uh it's a little bit easier to acquire some things as i found out but you're going to need two ceramic light sockets like this two wires a 50 millimeter pc fan a 12 volt power inverter, a drill, electric or cordless, but a drill, skill saw, silicone sealant. I use the automotive grade for installing windshields. This stuff is really, really tough. Some eight by three quarter inch self drilling sheet metal screws. and miscellaneous wire and wire connectors. Okay, I don't think I missed it. Okay, you also gonna need some plexiglass. This is bulk. Uh, this is 3 16 one eighth inch will work fine. Um, any picture frame that you get from the dollar store, Dollar General or anything like Walmart has a piece of plexiglass in it. That'll work good as well, guys. So, moving on. First thing we're gonna do is cut off a piece of plexiglass. Guys, the first thing you're going to want to do there's no preset size to what these things need to be but i kind of like them long and narrow on these so this is about five inches wide by about nine and a half to ten inches long you don't want to use a dremel or something like that to cut this because they spin too fast and it melts the plastic so you've got to use just a regular old uh hacksaw and go at this slowly yeah, Rachel, honey, can you reach over and hold that? You will need a, a spare set of hands to help hold this stuff. And you just stay on your mark. And go slow and steady. I'm not gonna make you guys, I'm not gonna make you guys watch all this. I'm gonna go ahead and get it cut and then I'll be right back. I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but here's the Here's the piece of plexiglass right here. I've staggered it a little bit to this side because the uh, the humidity jug, we're gonna use an old mayonnaise jug. Glass or plastic, doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a full fill tube right here in the middle and drill a couple of vent holes over here. Cause uh, these birds, emus or ostrich, they only require 25 to 35% humidity during incubation. Uh, 
so we got to do some some special figuring for stuff like this so we're going to take this and put it right here where i want it on top of the box Let's see if i can get this where y'all can see it i got a red sharpie here so i can see it good press it down here and trace it out here on the top and it doesn't have to be perfect the sealant's going to cover it anyway I just need to know where I need to drill my start holes. There. Now that we've got that marked out, see, then I can drill four seven sixteenths inch holes here to start my arm, uh, or we can cut it out with a jigsaw. Come right back and do that. Okay, seven sixteenths inch drill bit, right inside the corners here, guys. You want to leave. A rim here a glue rim so you want to come in oh about a half an inch from the inside of your corner to drill your hole it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be close that happen that's how you fix it all right we'll get a jigsaw set up and we'll be right back okay now you want to get a straight edge and uh, and draw a straight line here between your holes And now we're just going to cut our hole out. We got our viewing hole here cut out. All right, we're gonna get this cleaned up and then we're gonna come right back and get our glass glued in, guys. Hang on. All right, guys, you can see right here on the rim that's your bead rim right here that goes around, that goes all the way around the top right there. Okay, so we're gonna run a bead. I've got automotive grade clear silicone like I said which is uh, for gluing windshields and glass back into cars it's really good stuff we'll run a pretty good bead of this stuff all the way around the perimeter just like that Get our glass, center it right back where we measured. Give it a good press down into that seal. 
Make sure it's sealed good. But with this being plastic, another thing that I do is I put self-drilling, those uh, little self-drilling screws in here on the corners to hold this thing in place, to also help hold it in place. I'm gonna be right back and show you how I do that, guys. That's your self-drilling sheet metal screws. I think I had mentioned the size before. I'm using eight by three quarter inch sheet metal screws. You can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, but they got a drill bit on the end of it. See there, it drills its own hole. So, I mount it here on the corner of this and very slowly, very slowly let it cut all the way through and into the cooler and this most of the time I get right to the end and I don't let the drill press on that because it'll pop that glass I just grab a little little screwdriver like this and finish tightening it up manually just like that all right I'm gonna pop three more in here and then we're gonna move on guys Okay, folks, we got our four screws in here. Now what I do, it's just better to use your finger. I'll take my finger on these edges and smooth your sealing out really good all the way around these corners. You usually don't have any sharp corners on this plastic, but just in case, some folks, I don't have little young ones. My youngest is 25, I'm fixing to be 26. So I don't have small young ones around. A lot of folks do and so you don't want any sharp edges whenever young ones are watching these eggs hatch all right let's smooth out and that can be drying while we're doing all the wiring and stuff like that here guys so we'll be right back when we start drilling the holes for the lights okay guys uh, this is going to kind of be inserted right in the middle of our video here because uh, my brand new Sony HDR CJ 230 uh, high definition video camera that I got for Christmas corrupted two thirds of the uh, of the files um, after we finished this very nice video for you for these uh, emu eggs uh, incubator that we're building for uh, Mr. Silver uh, right outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico because it was going to be an incubator with some special needs so I had explained all that earlier on in the video but you missed all of the in-depth detail of me showing you exactly how I did all of this so now you're going to have to kind of use your imagination while Rachel is on my JVC high def camera now, and I don't have to worry about it messing up on me. We're using the, uh, the GQF wafer. I've already got Mr. Silver's box adjusted at 97 and a half degrees, holding it around 20 to 23% humidity. 25%, as I understand, is pretty well ideal for these, uh, for ostrich and emu because of the arid environment that they come from. Um, and that 97 to 98 degrees is optimum for, for incubating their eggs. So we're using no modified water heater thermostat. We're using a uh, GQF wafer thermostat, which is available at GQF Manufacturing in Georgia. You can go to their website at gqfmanufacturing.com, or you can also find these at incubatorwarehouse.com. They're virtually the same price, and uh, I've dealt with both uh, companies in uh, in bulk and great de uh, uh, detail and these guys are all good they're really good folks okay so we uh, two bulbs 240 watt bulbs because there's a six, 60 day incubation cycle and were that either one of these bulbs were to blow out because this does not register radiant heat off the bulb it registers the ambient heat inside the box if we were to lose a bulb then the other bulb is going to do its job and keep the box warm enough um, using this thermostat. That's why we decided to go with the GQF wafer thermostat, building a box for, uh, for eggs that can go for $20, $30, $40 a piece. So, so you see what I'm saying. Uh, some other modifications that we did for this box. 
um, I made sure that the heating elements were pretty high. We lined the box in basically what is a dinner table liner. It's thick and it's made to be thrown in the washing machine whenever they get dirty. They're thick, padded, and they've grabbed, they'll hold the eggs because all the eggs will have to be hand turned. And so we lined, had to put a little bit of, of Chester drawer liner in here, which is not quite as thick, but the, over here is where our modified humidity jug is going to sit because uh, anything bigger than this is going to have the humidity too high in the box. So we designed, we used some 3 8 inch clear water line here, and we drilled the hole, uh, 3 8 inch hole right here in the center, and then quarter inch holes I put six around the perimeter of the lid on this old mayonnaise jar. You're going to introduce a cotton t-shirt as a wick in here so as the water falls down it will wick up this uh, this t-shirt inside here and come out of the, the vent holes inside your box during the incubation cycle. Whenever this you go to install this in the box you will drop this in here just like so fill it up right here to the rim with uh, with tepid water. You don't want cold and you don't want hot. You want it tepid whenever you put it in here to start warming up your, uh, your incubator. Lit it. And then this 3 8 water line, we drilled a 3 inch, a 3 8 inch hole diagonal at a 45 degree angle down through this box and out so that it would sit at an angle like this. So that you take your, let's see if I can get my arms out the way. All right, see we're going in, now we're gonna work this line you want to be careful so you don't spill your water, but you work your line inside your jug like this and stand it up right there in the corner, okay? Now that your jug will be installed, see the line is capped to where during incubation this will run out of or get close to running out of water within 60 days. And so you'll need to uncap it right here, take a regular kitchen funnel right there and you can look inside your box here. While you're filling it up, you can look inside and see when your water reaches optimum level. And this is a convenience so that you do not have to open the box to add water. Okay, guys, you see how we're running? I'm used a 50 millimeter PC fan right here. It's a blue LED, so even when the light cycles off, that blue light shines down in here so you can still see the eggs. So that whenever the eggs are hatching, uh, when the light cycles off, if you're wanting to watch that, you wouldn't have to use a flashlight or something or put a lamp over it because this it gives plenty of light in this little box even when the light cycle off. The wiring is just like all of my other incubator videos. There's only three contact points that you have to worry about. There is the, um, the uh, extension cord that I use. I hope we got enough light here. We're trying to run through this. We were sick. We did all that work to make uh, make this as detailed as we could for you guys, and then that blame camera mess up, and I just it just made us both sick. So, extension cord, power source, where we just cut it, flipped it around, and put the female in right back on it, so that our 12 volt uh, DC is 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC uh, inverter can be plugged up to the uh, other end of the extension cord hanging right here, okay? Then uh, we use two light bulbs and two wires. The, the, uh, it's the ceramic sockets, white wire and black wire on both of them. You twist the black wires and the white wires together, okay? These are the two wires running into the thermostat right here. They run out, okay? Then. Uh, Okay, one side, one side of the, the black wires goes to one side of your power supply. One side of your thermostat hooks to the white wires that come from the bulbs over here. Then the other side of your thermostat wire goes to the other side of your power source. Okay, three contact points, that is all. Only, only got to make contact three places to make this work. And I've got wiring diagrams that I'll post links to, guys, um, and other videos that I went into go into great detail on how I wire this up. I hate you missed all that, but that's just the way that it worked out. And this was specially designed for emu and ostrich. So if you guys want to build one, uh, then this is probably what you're going to have to look at to, to be safe. This box is big enough. The, uh, Mr. Silver says he's 
confident that it'll hold 10 or a dozen uh, emu eggs. So I'm going to get him to take me some pictures and take me some video of whenever the time comes for these things to start hatching out. And when I get that, I'll post it for you guys. Hope this helps out. Wade Rush with Rush Lane Poultry and Game Birds. Rachel behind the camera. We appreciate your patience and uh, watching our videos, guys. Happy spring 2014. We'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. After the initial setup, there's what she's holding. 97 and a half. 20% humidity.